Hello, back again at the Mayoti Alliance booth. I have the last interview of today, so you better enjoy the time. I welcome Jörg Feuchtmeier. Jörg, thank you for making time, coming up here. And as so many other members who didn't come with empty hands, I hold one of your products, but we don't tell everybody, right? So um, maybe we will start off with uh, something about you and what you do at Deal. Of course, so let me introduce myself. So I'm Jörg, I'm working in Deal Metering for the portfolio management. And here I have the responsibility to define the connectivity solutions for smart water metering applications in the future. I am here in Deal Metering, but I also represent our company in different organizations like the OMS Group or the European Standardization Organization, which is taking care about our business needs. Well then, of course, you know our common friend Wolfgang, you're sitting together with him, I'm sure, at the OMS. And uh, we talked with Christoph Bosbach today about sustainability and to make the metering world not only more sustainable, more efficient, but also more transparent. So, what are the challenges your end customer and the metering world you basically support and supply? What are the challenges today they have to pick up to? Yeah, it would be great that you pick up this, this topic. Um, for us, the utilities, we are facing more and more the topic that the resources are limited. Even in water distribution, we face the topic that in some areas the usage of water is limited in some time spans if it is, for example, extremely hot. So that's the one point. On the other hand, we are facing the issue that the distribution network of the water grid is getting older and therefore the risk to get small leaks inside the distribution network will be more and more increasing. We talk here about non-revenue water, so water that is generated and distributed but not reaching his normal endpoint. Giving you an example, some non-revenue water percentages are going from 8% in Germany up to 20% but even up to 40% in more northern European countries. Of course they have more water, it's not that important at that time. But the utilities are would like to optimize that and this is why they are aiming for the so-called digital twin and they need the transparency what is going on in their network to optimize the distribution and also to save energy in generation and putting the resources to the end consumer. Well, um, the community in the world is saying that water is going to be the blue oil of the future so uh, there is no reason to waste it and uh, I mean the numbers, the figures you were basically uh, uh, calling up, like 20%, even up to 40% water loss. This is, for my opinion, a drama. Yeah, and life is easy if you don't have to really uh, worry about water. But if it's a precious uh, uh, element, then that will change your mindset dramatically. So what solutions do you have for the customer to basically counteract with the loss of water and the other things? So for us, the journey of having a digital twin, it begins in the measurement device on the network. And here I brought with us our new Hydrus 2 with integrated uh, MyoT technology. This product is able to measure even a dropping water outlet on the end consumer. So it is very sensible and you can detect small leakages very early and drive countermeasures which will reduce the harm of your infrastructure in the environment. So this is one topic of that. In addition to his ultrasonic measurement principle, it is very ro robust and it could stay um, 12 or more years in the field. So it's also a contribution to sustainability and not to replace the meter every six years. And of course, it delivers data for our digital twin. That is quite innovative and you can almost, we also talked with Christoph about uh, behavior change. So if you have, if you can really detect dropping water uh, and that collects of course a big amount over time. So just think about the sink and the drops through the whole night. If you would have put a bucket underneath, it would be full by the morning. So behavior change, sustainability, this is a good thing. Uh, again, we have to make a mindset change. So. In the past, it was maybe quite common after two years to exchange the meter 
and then hopefully recycle. This one will last 12 years and that definitely is the right way towards sustainability from deal and that's really good. But we are not done yet. Right, Jörg? There's more. So, let me get my screen readable. <laughs> so, um, how do you communicate the data? You know, data transfer is quite important and to get the right data is, if you have no clue about it, just a common expectation that you get what you want. But we all know smart city is not the most friendliest place for data communication and you are in the middle of it. So tell us more about how do you communicate? Yeah, of course, if we thought about our new generation of water meters, we identified mainly three criteria to select the right connectivity out of that. The first criteria is, of course, the energy efficiency. You mentioned it, the meters are staying 12 years or even longer in the field. So energy efficiency is one major topic. The other one that we see is these measurement instruments will not only generate the index, the consumption value, it will deliver more values like flow, like medium temperature, like amperature, uh, ambient temperature, or if you talk about heating uh, meters, they will have also forward and backward temperature. So we also need to consider the amount of data that could be easily 40 to 100 bytes. That was the second criteria. And the third criteria is of course, you talk about IoT and smart city, we are facing more and more communication, communicating devices. So the robustness of our communication is much important because what is the need if I have the data here and it communicates, but it will never reach the back-end solution where we can also communicate to the end consumer. And you mentioned the topic of changing behavior of the end consumer. Only if the end consumer knows his behavior, he will be able to change. Until now, he is blind. So this will be. This is one criteria to be flexible with future applications, also sharing in a unregulated band. And therefore, Dimitring has selected the MyoT technology, and it's implemented here, which gives a very good solution with regard to energy efficiency amount of data that could be transmitted and of course the robustness. Do you see any other benefits um, of this technology? Well, yes, of course. Um, the utilities uh, will go out of their regular business where they do only metering and water or energy distribution. They are entering new segments. They are looking for new business opportunities and they see that in smart city applications. With the implementation of MyoT, we built the bridge of smart metering and smart city use cases. So the utility could do, for example, smart waste management or some applications like that. And this, will, this all could be communicated with one infrastructure that is installed and it, you will have shared costs. So it's a contribution to cost-efficient solutions. Very cool. So, this is the one side, it's the end point. We talked about communication, but there's something in between and I really hate to hand this product over because I love it so much. I am my self-made evangelist of that product. I love it. And it's another component of the spirit of deal. Looking into sustainability and uh, Tell us more about the product. I have customers which were almost had tear in their eyes when I walked out of the factory and took it with me. They wanted to keep it. Yeah, okay. I would like to introduce you our new gateway. It's an ESA IoT Gateway Compact. And thanks for putting the, the topic of sustainability all on the gateway side here, Uwe, because this will combine the existing communication technologies for for smart metering, which is the wireless MBUS, and for smart city, which is LoRaWAN. This will be integrated and in addition, we have MyoT as radio technology integrated for the future smart city applications with very robust solutions. I might say that we will also have implemented the MyoT for metering protocol, which is a slightly different protocol or a slightly different approach of MyoT. Um, it will use the well-known OMS application layer over the physics from MyoT, but it will 
give for the utilities the opportunity to create, to, end, to integrate the new technology without changing their complete software solutions. So they could just reuse what they have and if the data is in their deep data management system, they will not recognize if it came from, from IoT or from LoRa or from wireless MBUS. So this is why we have implemented IoT for metering as well. So you see this gateway could be easily installed and you have a multi-language gateway to receive all common radio technologies. This is very cool. So basically if you start with one standard, let's say LoRa, and you say, okay, I have a really challenging environment, I uh, have a lot of interferers, and uh, you need to use a more robust radio standard like Myoti, so you don't have to kiss your old equipment goodbye, you just take, take your gateway, uh, and we continue building up a network, a reliable transmission of telegrams using the deal gateway. So uh, I think that's awesome because it also saves not only the units like you did with your wonderful water meter, you can also save existing spendings and capex and you continue with other standards which are absolutely necessary to make your uh, mission and uh, your integration possible. Yes, of course. And I would like to give you some additional features of this gateway. So as I said, it is uh, implementing the radio modes. Um, we will have here for the wide area communication a LAN connection or we can also communicate with 4G modems if where a LAN connection is not available so we can use mobile networks. We have a streaming mode in the gateway which will provide a somehow real-time feature so the alarm that is generated from the meter will be immediately present at the utilities on that side. On the other hand side, we also consider some use cases where they say, okay, we don't take care about the real time in that high priority. So we have a locking mode inside where we can lock up to 50,000 devices for hourly values, for example, and we can transmit them once per day in the backend system, which will give at the end of the day the complete overview of the, ne the network behavior from the last day and this is a typical requirement that we see in metering that they would like to see the next day when they start working what happened the day before so this could be done as well um, okay we have some remote configuration capabilities of course the requirements will be changed and you can remotely from your desktop make a reconfiguration we, we offer an online help to, uh, system inside and um, talking about wide area communication this module this gateway is of course compatible with our ESA ETNET software solution from the metering for the metering applications but we also have an uh, interface to Amazon web services to Azure cloud and to for the LoRaWAN network providers we support all common interfaces and also to L'Oreal we are integrated in L'Oreal with the LoRaWAN communication on that point. Yeah, I think of course it is an indoor gateway, we will we could use it also outdoor with an uh, additional shielding box. Um, yeah, I think this is our gateway and we see this as a key for our, the future success of migrating smart city and smart metering. Well, um, being a portfolio manager, what's next? Come on. Give us a little bit of backstage peek. So, I would like to look in my pocket what I have here for you, yeah, okay, but nevertheless, you know, the metering is not only producing uh, water meter measuring devices. We will implement uh, MyoT for metering or meter MyoT technology in all our future metering portfolios, so we will extend our Sharky, which is the heat meter with the capability to transmit over MyoT. We will also go for mechanical water meters. They still have a remarkable market share in our section. So we will provide connectivity modules therefore as well. So this is what I can say fully. We need to go in that direct that we will implement MyoT in all our metering devices. In addition, we will um, we are pushing the MyoT for metering protocol in the OMS standard to 
build here the communication standard in metering in the future and also to have an interoperability test which will benefit to the end consumer. Thank you, Jörg, for giving us a little sneak peek backstage what's coming next. So, um, again, this little unit, somebody can blame the Mayoti Alliance uh, of prejudice that we don't like other standards. That's not the truth. This product is the proof. We welcome everybody with open arms. Look at this one. And so also the Laura community, open arms, open doors and welcome. You made a huge mistake, Jörg. I gave you the flow meter, you gave me the gateway, you will never get this one back. This one drives home with me. Yeah, you know, you, you know, the problem really is, I saw, okay, Herman was even hunting this unit down because it's the hot item of this show. Everybody wants it and I cannot blame them. Jörg, it was super fun. Thank you so much. When you have an update on your portfolio, come and see us or even worse, I come and I will make a surprise visit at the year. And then we are on and we will tape it, of course. Thank you so much. Thank you, Uwe, very, thank you very much for this interview. I enjoyed it, thanks. <laughs>